Hi everyone, welcome to Python tutorial for beginners. Python is a trending high level language used for programming purposes. The language is an object oriented and interpreted variant with dynamic semantics, which makes it simple and easy to adopt. Moreover, the language promotes readability, hence it redu reduces the overall cost for paid program maintenance. And this is the key reason why it is being developed and being used by the wider audience in today's modern programming languages that we have in the market. So without any delay, we'll talk about the agenda that we have for this tutorial and we'll take it from there. So the agenda for this tutorial is talking about the history of Python, who and uh, where did this exactly originated and then comes to what is the needs, reason that we are going with Python as a language. We do also have a number of languages out there in the market, but why Python? So characteristics of Python and also one such program that we usually do when we just learn any such basic languages and that is Hello World program. So I'll help you uh, with a small open source tool that we generally use in terms of compiling and executing uh, in the real time. And I also let you know about what the tool that we generally use and uh, the applications of Python. And the main important aspect of this particular tutorial is to talk about uh, the installation process, right? So we already know that what is the importance that we give for Python and how is that we going to develop a web application using different type of languages. But how is it get started is the paramount importance that we should give for any language. So this is something that we are trying to talk in this video. That is the installation Python where uh, you'll get a key hands on on how to get Python from uh, the libraries and also install in your local machines. Let's say even if you have Mac or Windows, I'll help you try install that particular library in your uh, local machine and that will help us uh, see if we can write a simple program with the help of Python language. So the next coming is the setting up the path, which is the most important uh, step in terms of installation is considered. So uh, after that, we do also have a couple of environment variables where Python is especially designed in. So we'll, we'll get to know about four such commands that we usually see in terms of Python as a language. And lastly, in terms of running and operational uh, steps, we will go through that in detail. So this is how the topics are constructed for this particular tutorial. I hope this would be pretty much flexible for you all guys to know what is Python and uh, you know how is it taking you uh, to create a web application. So I've seen many other videos online where I could see that none of these videos, which I think that doesn't uh, have the importance is uh, to know about what is Python and how is it uh, being, you know, available in the wider market. So without any delay, we'll talk about the history of Python first and then coming up, uh, touching up the below points. So the first one that I would like to talk about is the history. And before that, I would like to let uh, you guys all know that I'm Aditya and you can find me at Udemy. So you can just get into Udemy and then just type Venkata Aditya in the search bar and uh, you get all the resources or the, all the courses that I've designed in my channel. And you can go ahead and also see one of my videos, which is uh, React. So there are a couple of videos which are related to React where I've been telling people to just know about what is React. And I've also telling every such feature in detail when it comes to, uh, well, comes to the React JS library. So after this uh, program or after this course, I would really recommend you guys go ahead and watch out all the courses that I have in my Udemy course list. And that will help you understand and also create much of uh, the web application with ease. So we'll get into the first uh, topic of this particular tutorial, which is history of Python. So the first topic for today's tutorial is history of Python. Let's start with the first set of slides now. So Python was developed by a person called Udo van Rysum in the late 80s or probably in the early 90s at the National Research Institute for Mathematics and Computer Science. So it is derived from many other languages, including C, C++, which we usually see in any kind of programming languages that we deal in the company. And uh, Python is obviously copyrighted like Perl, Python source code is now available under the GNU, General Public License. 
So to tell you more context about what is the history of Python, Python is now maintained by a core development team at the Institute. Although Judo Van still holds a vital role in directing its progress, it's being developed by the main team right out there. So Python is derived from many other languages. If we might have uh, heard about uh, Algol 68, which are the languages that we used to have uh, in the early 90s or early 2000s. So this is how it, uh, the history of Python is especially derived from. But in talk, you know, in talking about uh, more uh, the history of Python is uh, it's a it's a trending high level language used for programming purposes. And uh, you know it's it's been the language which was initially released in 1990, and it has been 30 years to its popularity. So the the core philosophy of uh, the Python language uh, is because it's beautiful, it's it's better than ugly because you know you have all the libraries which we need for it to develop a web application is provided by Python. So it's explicit is better than implicit, and simple is better than complex. It is because you have all these features and core implications. So Python has surely enjoyed its fair share of fame and loved by the developers and its ultimate users. Now that we know the basics, let's get into the reasons that make Python development a trend uh, for the year 2020 and what changes are to be brought about in years to come. So the next point that we are talking about in this Python is why to learn Python. Right for every programming language we have in this current modern day world, as you know, there is one question right up there in the mind is because why and what is the purpose of me going or probably enrolling into this Python language, right? So Python is, is as I said, it's a high-level interpreted language. It uses English keywords frequently, whereas other languages use punctuations, and it has fewer syntactical constructions than other languages. Python is a must guys for students and working professionals to become a great software engineer, especially when they are working in web development domain. I will list down some of the key advantages of learning Python. In that area, I'll talk about the first point, which is Python is interpreted. Python is processed at runtime by the interpreter. You do not need to compile your program before executing it. This is similar to Perl and PHP. And the next one is Python is interactive. You can actually sit at a Python prompt and interact with the interpreter directly to write your programs. So this is how it is user friendly and also it is very communicative in terms of a language. And the next one is Python is object oriented. So Python supports object oriented style or technique of programming that encapsulates code within objects. And the last one is it's a beginner's language. Python is a great language for the beginner level programmers and supports the development of a wide range of applications from simple text processing to browsers to games. So this is the reason why people opt for Python because it is very handy. It is very interactive. The moment you try to analyze what the requirements are, it is very easy for you to develop an application and implement that in any kind of servers that we currently have. So this is the reason why we go with Python and I hope this is the question or this is the answer that for the question which is why to run Python. Now we'll talk something related to the characteristics or probably the features of Python. So generally for any programming languages we do have different types of uh, features that it is supported in any of your local machines. At some point in time we had about so many programming languages as we could count on our fingers. Today, there are so many and all with their own specialities. But what makes a language unique is its features. And ultimately, it is its features that get it chosen or passed for a project. So before beginning with deeper concepts of Python, let's first take a look at the basic or the features that justifies the reasons behind what makes Python so powerful and as compared to any other programming languages. So let's start with the uh, characteristics of Python language. The first one is it supports functional and structured programming methods as well as object or oriented programming. The reason that I say is because a programming language that can model the real world is said to be object oriented. It focuses on objects and combines data and functions. Contrarily, a procedure oriented language revolves around functions which are 
code that can be reused. Python supports both procedure oriented and object oriented programming, which is one of the key Python features. It also supports multiple inheritance, unlike Java. A class is a blueprint for such object. It is an abstract data type and holds no voice. So it can be used as a scripting language or can be compiled to byte code for building large applications. It is because whenever you have any such programming languages or probably if you are familiar with any languages like C++ or Java, you must first compile it and then run it. But in Python, there is no need to compile it. Internally, its source code is converted into an immediate form called bytecode. So all you need to do is to run your Python code without worrying about linking libraries and a few other things. But by interpreted, we mean the source code is executed line by line and not all at once. Because of this, it is easier to debug your code. Also, interpreting makes it just slightly slower than Java, but that does not matter compared to the benefits it has to offer. If you have any doubt in all these programming languages, please do check the remaining slides and that will help you understand better in terms of Python as a language. So the last one is the integrated version. Or I can say that if you have a GUI programming or if you are you know, probably trying to connect with C or C, C++ and that will help you understand how is it being extensible. If needed, you can write some of your Python code in other, other languages like C++. This makes Python an extensible language, meaning that it can be extended to other languages. And I can also talk about the embeddable because we just saw that we can put code in other languages in our Python source code. However, it is also possible to put your Python code in a source code in different language like C++. This allows us to integrate scripting capabilities into a program of the other language. Now we'll get into the applications of Python. As mentioned before, Python is one of the most widely used language over the web. I'm going to list few of them here. The first one is easy to learn. Python has few keywords, simple structure, and a clearly defined syntax. This allows the student to pick up the language quickly. Next one is a broad standard library. Python's bulk of the library is very portable and cross-platform compatible on Unix, Windows, and Macintosh. And the next one is ex extendable. You can add low-level modules to the Python interpreter. These modules enable programmers to add to or customize their tools to be more efficient. Not only all these three are the applications that I would like to tell you, but there are few of them which I can talk about as the portable. Python can run on a wide variety of hardware platforms and has the same interface on all platforms. And GUI programming. Python supports GUI applications that can be created and ported to many system calls, libraries and Windows systems such as Windows MFC, Macintosh and X Windows system of Unix. So it is also scalable guys, like for example, Python provides a better structure and support for a large programs than shell scripting. And I, it's also interactive when it comes to communication between the language and the system. That means Python has support for an interactive mode, which allows interactive testing and debugging of snippets of code. So as I said, this is achieved in terms of standard library that they provide while we install it in our local machines. So this is the reason why people go with Python because of its strength and because of its robust structure in terms of application or probably in terms of testing that mechanism before it is getting into the market. This is the reason why people opt for Python in terms of developing an application or in terms of releasing into the market. This is about the applications of Python. So now we'll talk about the installation process of Python. As you can see, Python process is very easy and simple. It's just three step away and it's as simple as we speak. So the first one is getting Python. So the most up to date and current source code, binaries, documentation, news is available on the official website, which is python.org. 
You can also download the Python documentation, which is at python.org slash doc. The documentation is available in HTML, PDF and PostScript formats. So I'll guide you in terms of installing this Python using the links, which is there on the screen. So quickly open up your browser and get into python.org slash downloads. So the whatever the version that you see at the top is the latest version and that will help you install in your local machines. Whatever the environment that you are into, if it is Windows, please click on this particular link. And if it is Linux or Unix, Mac, you just go ahead with the links that we have for the environments. In terms of Python for Windows, what I can do is you have multiple download files here. Depends on your local environment. If you have a system or a laptop, which is an x86 portable executable installer, then I would recommend you select one of these files and then go ahead with the installation process. So this is how you use in terms of Python for Windows. Same applies for Mac and any other environments. So if I say Mac, you can download the version that you have in your system and then version which is compatible in terms of releases. So whatever the system configuration is, please do recommend. Uh, I would recommend you please go ahead with the system settings and then come here and then check for the appropriate file. Sometimes what happens is if you select a file which is not compatible to your local machine, you might end up Python not being working in your local machine. So in order to be thorough with or in order to be connect with all the dots, what I could recommend is please check your system configuration and then come to this place and then select the appropriate file which suits your local machine much better. So this is what we talk in terms of getting Python. So now we'll talk about installing Python. So Python distribution is always available when it comes to the installation. It's because you need to download only the binary code applicable for your platform and install Python. So if the binary code for your platform is not available, you need a C compiler to compile the source code manually. Compiling the source code offers more flexibility in terms of choice of features that you require in your installation. So here's a quick overview of installing Python on Windows installation. So if you're using Windows installation, here are the steps to install Python on the Windows machine. As I said, go to this particular link and follow by the installer called Python XYZ MSI file where XYZ is the version and you need to install. So to use this installer, Python XYZ, that is the version number dot MSI, the Windows system must support Microsoft installer 2.0. Save the installer file to your local machine and then run it to your find out if your machine supports MSI. After that, run the download file. This brings up to the Python install wizard, which is really easy to use. Just accept the default settings, wait until the install is finished and you're done. So the same, probably there are different steps altogether when it comes to Macintosh. As I said, recent Macs comes up with Python installed, but it may be several years out of date. See how these are have, you know, how these are available in Mac OS section under Python website. For older Mac OS, before Mac OS X 10.3 released in 2003, Mac, Mac Python is available. So this is about the Windows installation and Mac installation for Python. So talk about something related to uh, the installing Python. As I said, the most up to date and current source code binaries documentation will be available the moment you click or the moment you get into this particular website, right? And the documentation is also available when you get into python.org slash doc. So this is the Python docs. It is available in different formats. Feel free to use on your own request. So this is how about we talking in terms of Python installation. Though it is available on a wide variety of platforms, including Linus, Linux, Mac OS, so please do make sure that you check your system configuration before you download any file from the browser. That will help you understand in terms of the installation process and how well you have 
successfully installed in your local machines. So this is about the installation of Python. Now we'll talk something related to Python environment variables. So here are the important environment variables which can be recognized by Python. The first one is Python path. It has a role similar to path. This variable tells the Python interpreter where to locate the module files import into a program. It should include the Python source library directory and the directories containing Python source code. Python path is sometimes present preset by the Python installer. And the next one is Python startup. It contains the path of an initialization file containing Python source code. It is executed every time you start the interpreter. It is named as .pythonrc.py in Unix and it contains commands that load utilities or modify Python path. The next one is Python case OK. It is used in Windows to instruct Python to find the first case insensitive match in an import statement. Set this variable to any value to activate it. And the last one is Python home. It is an alternative module search path. It is usually embedded in the Python startup or the Python path directories to make switching module libraries easy. So not all these are something which is mandatory. But what I suggest in terms of getting all these know is to know about these environment variables for now and that will help you understand what are the different types of environment variables we have. Some, for example, the interpreter interface resembles that of the Unix shell but provides some additional methods of in invocation. For example, when called with standard input connected to a TTY device, it prompts for commands and executes them until an end of function or end of character. So these are some of the commands or the environment variables that I can project in terms of the Python beginners course tutorial. So there are almost plenty environment variables which is available in the Python documentation and I would recommend everyone to go ahead and check what is that we have in terms of these Python environment variables. So all these are simple, clean and self-explanatory commands. So before you get into developing an application, I would recommend you get into the documentation first and then search for the relevant commands and put it in your web publication. This is what I do and I would recommend the same for yourself as well. So everything comes in an embeddable, embeddable package that is when extracted, the embedded distribution is almost fully isolated from the user system, including environment variables, system registry settings, and etc. So all these are the recommended environment variables. So that's it when it comes to the commands. Now we'll talk something related to running Python. There are three different ways to start Python. The first one is interactive interpreter. That means you can start Python from Unix, DOS or any other system that provides you a command line interpreter or shell window. So before I just get into the commands, I would like to show you a couple of things in terms of how it does. So you can open the command line and you can start coding right away in the interactive interpreter. So I would like to talk about something called as command line options. There are so many command line options available for Python but I would like to project few of them in this tutorial. The first one is hyphen D. It provides debug output. And the next one is capital O. That means hyphen O. It generates optimized bytecode resulting in .pyo files followed by capital S hyphen S, small hyphen V, capital minus X, minus C, CMD file. All these are the commands which will help us try to install or probably try out in terms of coding using an interpreter which is very interactive. This is about the first one which is interactive interpreter. And the next one is script from the command line. That means a Python script can be executed at command line by invoking the interpreter on your application. For example, if you just open your command prompt and then just type Python 
script.py that will help us see if we have that permissions or not. So this is a simple command that will help you understand how we can go ahead and try in terms of a command prompt or in terms of a script from the command line feature is considered. So this is about the script from the command line for now. And the next one is integrated development environment. This means you can run Python from a GUI. That means graphical user interface environment as well. If you have a GUI application on your system that supports Python, for example, Unix, Idle is the very first Unix ID for Python. And Windows Python V, Win is the first Windows interface for Python and is an ID with a GUI. And followed by Macintosh, that is the version of Python along with the Idle IDE is available from the main website. So if you're not able to set up the environment properly, then you can take help from your system admin. Make sure the Python environment is properly set up and working perfectly fine. A small note I would like to tell you is all the examples given in the subsequent I mean, slides with the Python 2.4.3 version. So we have already set up Python programming environment online so that you can execute all the available exam examples online. So this is about running Python in your local machine. So now we'll talk something related to the Hello World program using Python. So for every such program that we have for a programming language, we do also have this particular syntax, which is Hello World, right? Instead of Hello World, we'll just write Hello Python to just see how it goes. So in order to achieve this or in order to execute this particular syntax, the tool that I'm going to use is called Jupyter. So Jupyter is a web-based interactive development environment for Jupyter notebooks, code and data. So it is flexible and you can configure and arrange the user interface to support a wide range of workflows in data science, scientific computing and machine learning. So Jupyter Lab is an extensible and modular in terms of write plugins that add new components and integrate with existing ones. So if you have the existing to develop open source software, open source standards and service for interactive computing across dozens of programming languages. So this is all about Jupyter and we'll get quickly into the working functionality of this particular syntax using Jupyter Lab. I'll click on this try this input and the try classic notebook is the one that we are going to discuss it now and we do also have a couple of inbuilt interpreters or compilers that you can use it based on your uh, basic requirements but for now what I would go with is uh, the try classic notebook in which we can just first it will create an environment saying that we can execute the python commands with ease it doesn't have to anything to do with the installation in your local browser the moment you op open Jupyter and click on uh, the Jupyter Lab in your browser, it will install all the necessary modules that we might require in terms of executing Python commands. So now what I would just do is, you can see that this is the welcome screen of the Jupyter Labs. And this is how it gets. If you need any other documentation in terms of what Jupyter is, you can get into all these links and that will help you understand what is that something you are looking for and if you would like to start the directory or the tutorial directly you can just type cdi python in depth jupyter notebook that will help you or show you the appropriate tutorials which will help you analyze or run commands using this environment for now what i do is i'll quickly type this plus icon which will help me open up a compile interpreter compiler which will give me a chance to write down the commands that I wish to write it here. For now, what I do is I just write Python enter. And sorry, and I'm done with writing the syntax. What I do now is I quickly run this command and you can see the output, which is hello Python. So this is how it is very easy in terms of writing a syntax when it comes to a Python language. So whatever the commands that you have in terms of Python, you can get into Jupyter and add your own commands and then download or you can also get an option to link in your GitHub repository. So the moment you have all the code here, what you can do is you can download or otherwise you can go ahead and install it in your GitHub repository. So this is how it is very useful in terms of 
you analyzing the syntax and also talking about the output it is very easy and it is very interactive so this is how about talking in terms of python as a basic example so please do watch all my tutorials in udemy which will help you understand what all the web applications that we can uh, create using all the languages that we have for today we spoke something related to python as in starting but in my next tutorial i'll be talking something deep in terms of python for example we have couple of features when it comes to programming languages so same does applies for python so in my next class i will talk about something related to a basic syntax variable types basic operators decision making loops numbers so all these concepts will be given to you with an example so that we don't go above our head and see what or probably where we are getting disconnected so this is how my curriculum is and i would recommend you go ahead and uh, enroll all my courses in udemy and that will help you understand the understand and develop different web application based on your requirement thank you for watching this video and have a safe day ahead